you very much for that. But let's talk about IT. Yesterday, uh, the IT stocks were doing well on the back of a Motilal Oswal upgrade. So Motilal Oswal had an underweight rating on the Indian tech sector and they upgraded it to a mile overweight. They singled out Infosys as one of the big movers, but there were upgrades on a lot of other stocks like Wipro, Emphasis, you know, Xensar, etc. Abhishek Pata, Research Analyst, Technology, Institutional Equities and Motilal Oswal Financial Services is now joining us on the show. Abhishek, thank you very much for joining in. First, tell us what's driving this upgrade because Indian IT companies are still struggling on the revenue front. And even if you look at estimates all the way out uh, FI27 or even FI28, we're still talking about single digit. Maybe low single digit moves to high single digits by FI28. Uh, so what explains the upgrade from here on and how much upside do you expect now? Right. Uh, hey, Rima. Thank you for having me here. Um, so, you know, our call is um, actually fundamentally about the business cycle turning. Uh, we've been negative on the space for um, the last one year now. Uh, Infosys is a stock we downgraded um, earlier at the start of the year. Uh, our model portfolio also has no IT, um, you know, for the last one year. And that's largely because there has been no appetite for discretionary IT spending um, globally, right? I mean, the entire incremental tech spend has focused on uh, AI CapEx and AI infrastructure. Uh, and we are now in the third year of the AI CapEx cycle. Now, historically, uh, in year three um, or year four is when uh, the spend start rotating back from uh, hardware and hardware and infra to, to services. Uh, and that pattern has held true across multiple cycles. And we believe um, we are closer to that rotation now. So, you know, we think that AI-led services deals will sort of, you know, start picking up uh, maybe in the second half of uh, this calendar year. Uh, and uh, that's when you start seeing a meaningful uptick in revenues um, uh, over the next, let's say, two, three years. And the valuations being where they are, uh, they mostly price in uh, a pretty pessimistic scenario for IT services. And we believe uh, if, if revenue growth rates triple <clears throat> from 3 to 4% right now to even 8 9% over the next two to three year period, uh, we should be expecting uh, a massive re-rating in the sector. Mm. When you say massive re-rating, Abhishek, uh... Uh, what kind of upside are you fact factoring in? Uh, give us a sense of the upside on different stocks that you're tracking. And you already believe that we are at the bottom. So do you think we'll only see a one-way up move from here on? Yeah, so I think, you know, uh, most valuations for large caps are uh, kind of uh, either at their 10-year averages or, or at a significant discount to their five-year averages, right? So I, I'd like to believe that... Uh, uh, whatever headwinds, uh, whatever major headwinds the sector had to face, we're already kind of, you know, pricing that in. Um, and, um, uh, you know, if growth rates triple, uh, uh, you know, if, if we are uh, at the beginning of an actual technology implementation cycle, uh, I expect a 20, 30 uh, percent re-rating in, uh, in multiples uh, and, um, you know, earnings upgrade cycles to come in. So most of our estimates uh, or most of our target prices right now feature upsides between uh, uh, anywhere between 40 to 60 percent, uh, depending on the stocks we're talking about. So, mm. um, you know, Infosys, uh, we are pricing in a 40 percent upside. Uh, some of the smaller names for Forge, we are very positive. We believe the stock could do almost 70 percent upside over a significant period. Hexaware as well. So, again, I mean, we believe that um, uh, the payoffs are asymmetric. Uh, most of the negative news, negative news flows are priced in, and uh, if the cycle turns, uh, there is uh, there is uh, there's a good um, sort of upside to be had from here, these levels. Mm. Yeah, Abhishek, you mentioned the valuations. Fair enough that the valuations are beaten down. But looking at the commentary that the companies have given after the end of the second quarter as well, most of it comes to a conclusion that things have not changed much on ground, whether it comes to the demand scenario or whether it comes to discretionary spending. So is it, ju is it just a hope that things will turn in a couple of years? Because as of now, at least for the first half of this year, things have not, they have remained the same as they were over the last 12 to 18 months. Right. Uh, so, you know, I mean, uh, uh, this, uh, this, this current down cycle exactly mirrors uh, the cloud build out we saw from 2015 to 18, right? I mean, um, uh, CapEx was increasing quarter on quarter, and we saw organic growth rate across the entire, uh, you know, uh, IT sector reduce from 10, 12% to almost 4.5%, 5%. Once the CapEx settled down, not reduced, just sort of rebased to a, to a, to a different high level, um, you know, we saw that services spend come in and we saw growth rates accelerate across the board uh, between 2017 to 2020. Uh, so, so you know, uh, this is, like I said, I mean, this is, this is more a call on um, sort of, you know, the business cycle turning and um, sort of, you know, uh, I mean, uh, uh, the hardware spends kind of, you know, morphing a little bit into services 
and um, so uh, it, it's played out before uh, multiple times, uh, and we're again there. Uh, and uh, I believe that uh, you know we are, we have to brace ourselves for a turnaround. So you're expecting eight nine percent kind of revenue growth by FY twenty eight. That's right. Uh, for the large caps, I am at around eight and a half to nine and a half percent. Uh, for mid caps, of course, I mean, uh, depending on the company we are tracking, we could go as high as 25%. Uh, but the range uh, that I am building in is between 15 to 25%. Okay. And in mid caps, Coforge, you spoke about a 70% upside. Uh, right. Which other stocks do you like in the mid cap space where growth rates are going to be closer to 25%? Um, so, uh, you know, we like Persistent as well. Uh, you know, it's a fantastic team. They execute really well. Um, uh, but the valuations are a tad bit expensive over there, but we still like the name a lot. Uh, Hexaware is a name that we, again, uh, really prefer. Uh, it's it's probably one of our top ideas for uh, for the next uh, couple of years. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, we also upgraded em emphasis to buy. Uh, we believe that uh, the stock has gone through its own um, client-specific issues over the past uh, six, eight months, but the deal wins are quite strong. Uh, and the next two, three quarters, we should see a, we should see a pretty smooth uptick in, in growth rates. So, yeah, these three names I'd probably call out. Um, from, um, from a mid-tier perspective. Uh, um, Abhishek, uh, you know, for starters, when you speak to Indian companies, what kind of productivity improvements are you seeing? So NTT spoke about 50% this year, going up to 70% in the software development cycle in two years. Uh, so that's question number one. Where are we, you know, in, in the Indian companies? And number two, um, have you been able to quantify in your analysis now, models for the next two years, what could be the contribution that comes, say, from generative AI or agentic AI? Like entities put a number to it at $2 billion. Right. Uh, yeah, no, I think uh, on the first question, uh, you know, in fact, we've uh, kind of written extensively on this uh, across the entire software development lifecycle, right? Be it low level coding, testing, incident sort of generation, debugging, uh, documentation. Uh, we should be seeing close to 40 to 50 percent productivity gains, um, you know, at a at a steady state, right? I mean, uh, these numbers are these numbers are obviously uh, not, uh, you know, kind of being implemented right now. But yeah, eventually we do see that kind of gain. Um, see, I mean, uh, productivity gains uh, are are coming for the industry, and there is no two ways about it, right? I think the um, uh, the the call is that um, there has always been a technology that disrupted the previous model for IT services. And, uh, you know, uh, these companies have been able to pivot successfully time and again. Uh, likewise, uh, you know, we will see new models coming in. We will see, uh, for example, we will see service as a software being picked up far more often, right? We will see platformization or these services being offered as platforms far more often. And we'll see revenue per employee across the industry uh, go up quite significantly to kind of counter uh, these arguments. But at the end of the day, um, Getting to Gen AI will need a significant amount of system integration work, a lot of sort of data engineering, a lot of uh, service lines, new service lines will open up, uh, which will uh, which will kind oh, of Abhishek, offset. Yes, on that itself, on AI, you know, we've been talking about around uh, $5 trillion uh, spends by 2030. Uh, if you can quickly tell us, how would that impact Indian IT? Yeah, I think, uh, uh, so CapEx, uh, CapEx is is only the the base uh, spend assumption for for IT right. I mean, what happens when I when I want a higher higher ROI on that CapEx is when services uh, comes in. So I mean that the same thing happened in cloud right. Between 16 to 19, um, hyperscalers sold a lot of capacity, a lot of compute and cloud capacity to enterprises, but they did not know what to do with this capacity right uh, to actually implement them to actually shift my workloads from legacy. Uh, to uh, to cloud that needs a lot of work. So uh, the arithmetic around whether we, we lose three percent growth from uh, you know Gen AI and we uh, get five percent extra, I think we are probably too early in the cycle to call that out. Uh, but uh, but if if there's anything to go by uh, how the early cycles have played out, uh, there will be revenue accretive opportunities coming in the way and um, the right companies who can honestly innovate a little bit and sort of, you know, disrupt their own sort of cycle, uh, their, their own business models will probably do do well. And that's, those are the soft picks that we've, uh, we've gone with. Abhishek, thank you for sparing time and joining us with these interesting insights on the Indian IT sector. <clears throat> the markets uh, continue to remain very choppy. The Nifty Bank is now back into the green as we speak. We'll take a short break, focus on the crypto markets on the other side with Manisha Gupta.